and welcome to Sex, Psychics and Psychedelics, Discovering Inner Liberation. My name is Banana Jane Garnett. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, a lover of freedom and a relentless explorer of the mind. Please come join me on my journey in hot pursuit of inner illumination and liberation. For more about me, you can find me at The Banana Jane on Instagram. Now let's dive in. I'm here with Miley Blake, who is a trans woman, a sexuality coach, and an immersive experience designer. Miley and I talk about what it means to be a trans siren, how taking LSD as a teenager can help with sexual confusion, the process of transformation that has run throughout her life, and her stint directing artsy porn. Most therapeutically, we talk about ego death and how shattering the ego can be the best thing that ever happened. Welcome, Miley. Let's get started. I just want to kind of get more grounded for the people who haven't seen your Instagram yet, who haven't visited Transsiren yet. What I've been witnessing is this sort of what looks like a beautiful evolution into a sense of joy. I see these pictures that you're posting in which you look more and more kind of boldly feminine and Mm -hmm. sparkling. And there's quite a kind of naughty, bewitching, sarony kind of vibe Mm -hmm. that is very come hither. And I enjoy it for that reason. And I also (laughs) enjoy it because I can see how real your joy is. And I've got a very sensitive meter for that because I spend, you know, my work life gauging that in people and kind of tuning into feeling. And um, so I can see that you're on a really, really cool ride and Mm -hmm. (laughs) in becoming more, is it more feminine or more you? Can you tell us a bit about the beginning, middle and then current moment that you're in on this trans journey? So um, I can only speak for myself. Uh, Every trans experience is different. I just always like to predicate it like that. Um, There are common grounds that I think all of us trans folks share, uh, as well as all humans, but every journey is different. And this is, this is mine. Uh, So thank you for asking. So I was a little kid and my parents got divorced when I was really young. And I always felt uncertain of my being myself. I didn't know I thought it was that maybe I was just born an old soul, born into a young body. That's what people said about me as I was growing up. My parents, since they got divorced really young, it kind of ingrained in me to remember everything kind of momentous that happened from that age forward. And I even remember some of the times that they lived together before the age of three because of what it was. And also feeling unsettled in the body. I think created a level of awareness of my surroundings in such a way that that was the only thing that made sense to hold on to. My mom did a really, really good job of making sure we were loved and knew we were cared for and knew we weren't going to be abandoned, you know, by everyone that she loved us no matter what we were Mm. all together. And, you know, she did a really good job with that. And so Around the age of six, when school started and we'd have to go school shopping, I would throw fits. I didn't understand why. I just didn't want to do it. I didn't feel comfortable. Everything that I picked out was wrong. Everything that I tried on was wrong. Nothing looked right. And at that point, I was like, well, I'm just temperamental and I feel weird and I'm just mm. going to like be weird. I'm going to copy. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> I'll just be weird. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to copy my older brother because he seems to know what to do. Uh-huh. So I'm going to, uh-huh. I'm going to make whatever he's doing my own. And yeah. That's what, that's how I'm going to create a persona for now. Cause I obviously don't understand. Right. Exactly. Feeling. How do you, how do you get through life? Sometimes you just have to sort of stick pieces together, wing it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And <laughs> uh-huh. meanwhile, I'm like seven, you know, like yeah. uh, my, I, I learned to read really young and my mom always, she couldn't afford toys, but we had cable. So I like, so I watched a lot of movies <laughs> mm-hmm. and I got a lot mm-hmm. of exposure to the outside world and the world around me and living in the, the Northeast, it was like, you'd leave the house and your parents would forget about you until sunset. And so the experience of Growing up and being free to like get lost and Mm. find your way home and all of that created a level of independence, Yeah, which uh, around the time I was 
10, it became very apparent to me that there was something different. And I did not know how to explain it. I did not know what to talk about. It started appearing in my, the first places I recognized it were in my dreams and in the way that I was reading comic books. Okay, but tell me more about uh, that. That's interesting. um, In comic books, who I I would always relate to the female superhero. Mm. Uh, When I first started fantasizing about things, I'm getting attraction and I'm getting like a chemical chemical feeling inside that, you know, is turn on. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the, can we say it? Yep. Instead of, yeah. Instead of switching from a level of like wanting to have sex with that person or know with that person or be close to that, person, it's a, it was a wanting to be that person. Yeah. Inside of their body and moving it. Right. Inside of their body. In, in it's not like I want to penetrate that person. It's right. Or, it is in a way I want to be that person in a way. Maybe penetration is being, but just more, more full. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. have I just and opened up a huge can of worms with that thought? Not at all. <laughs> not at all. And it's, but, but if you think about like what, uh, let's talk about what you said for a second. Like if, if it's about a more full penetration, it's generally also what you look, what people look for in intimacy with another person is being filled up by that yes. by separating their 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 beings from the body and becoming one or three or five or however many uh people are in that yeah. space in that moment but it's about that connection of separation from the body and into that energy together so you're right in that it is like that full penetration but it's oh this is weird so instead of it being a uh where somebody is where it's like you're getting so full that nothing else but that being can emanate out of you again. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like you're so full of that energy that either you're taking in or somebody is giving you that mm-hmm. you transform and that actually into that out. person. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or or into a new being through that person. Uh, but that's a whole. We'll get there later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I am seeing how the spirit of transformation is really encoded. Oh, in it's story. my favorite movies as a kid were werewolf movies. My favorite like stories were stories of transformation. My favorite sort of self help is the sort of transformational self help. Yeah, I love the moving of energy into something new. You yeah. Know, caterpillars yeah. and butterflies. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yes. Totally, totally. We're, we're kindred spirits in that respect. Where did you notice that? I mean, obviously it's there in comic books and it's there in, uh, you said, werewolf movies. Horror with, movies. Horror yeah. movies. Did you see it also in nature? Did you see it everywhere you looked or? Uh, I did. I used to keep caterpillars and raise them in oh, butterflies as a little kid. Adorable. And because and, and, in New York City, you know, they're not everywhere. Uh, Because it's a city, so if you find one on a tree, it's a treat. (laughs) (laughs) So sweet, thinking about caterpillars in New York City. They probably are everywhere without us even knowing it. Yeah, and I kept finding them, and then I would take them in little little Tupperware, because my mom was a Tupperware lady, and I have the little Tupperware bowls with the tops, and I put them in the little bowl, and I poke a hole, and then I bring bring them home, and I put them in a tank, and I... I put in these trees and oh kind of wow, you had a whole them, oh my god, yeah, and let them world. become butterflies and then I let them go. Like I kept them safe. You can't, you can't be a caterpillar in New York City. Oh, that is so fucking sweet. I love that story. But wait, well, your mom, your mom was a. Did you say she was a Tupperware lady, or you just meant she had Tupperware? <laughs> no, no, she also she was also a Tupperware person. You know, going and throwing Personal. the parties, yeah, doing doing the yeah, thing. doing that for a little while. Yeah, yeah, she was trying all sorts of hustles when I was a kid. Uh, <laughs> it was it's an interesting image to pair beside your transformation, right? From the Tupperware lady to the the trans siren is like a beautiful kind of spectrum of oh it's, femininity. <laughs> It keeps going. It keeps so, going. I, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so I was, uh, the first time I ever tried to say anything to family about these feelings and what was going on, I was 12 and I'm eating Chinese food at the kitchen table and my mom and my brother are sitting in the living room. We had this three bedroom apartment, but it was one of those Florida apartments where everything is kind of compressed, even though it's three bedrooms. So I'm at the dining room table. They're over here, maybe like five feet away. And I'm like slowly weeping and my 
my mm. rice, my fried rice. And, and they're like watching wrestling. And my mom looks up and goes, uh, Miley, are you, are you, what's going on over there? Like on my tongue is like, I don't feel right. I've been having these dreams, these fantasies, this like, I don't know. And it's been going on for a while to where I need to say something. Um, I can't make out the words. I can't actually admit and say it and like own that this went beyond what I said, which was, I think I'm depressed. Mm. Because like when you're, when you're 12 year old and it's the mid 90s, it's the early 90s, you say you're depressed. (laughs) That's all over TV. It's like, that's still pretty evolved. You know, dare, dare, dare told me that I can say I'm depressed and go to a shrink and get pills or I can be depressed and do drugs. So, right, right. so, <laughs> so I chose to try the pills first. I tried to go the, that route and that was not the route. <laughs> I wasn't actually depressed. So when yeah. they put me on Pax, Paxil, I felt like I was on speed. Ugh. As a 12 year old, right? Nice. And, but I immediately was like, this isn't right either. So that, that saved me from whatever doom that was going to lead me down. And I continued seeing a therapist and I never talked to them about it, which is, you know, I just talked to them about family problems. Was it helpful to see the therapist? Yeah, because it got me through, uh, like, so I, I, I don't know, it sounds weird. Like, I don't talk about myself like this. So, mm-hmm. like, I also was gifted. Mm-hmm. So I'm also, like, a very smart child. So I had already been kind of going in in peer counseling and in counseling because I had skipped a grade and then I skipped another grade. Uh, we moved around a lot. So I kept testing out, which was great. But I also was not in the same classes with my peers. I was with kids who were like a year or two older than me, which also caused a lot of weirdness because yeah. if everyone around you is on a different timeline than you, but they're all on the same one, talk about feeling even more alienated. So yeah, you really had your work cut out for you, didn't you? Across the board. Yeah. <laughs> it made, I was an introvert, so yeah. it was fine. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, I wasn't really, yeah, I wasn't really well, trying to make look, a bunch of friends you and had, be social. You, you know? had your caterpillars and your shows, right? So, so I guess yeah. that was fine, yeah. So uh, my brother went away to college. I moved to a different school again. At this point, we were living in Florida, which is a terrible place. Don't ever move your kids there especially when they're teenagers. Oh, really? Okay. there's nothing to do. And if they're from a place that... Sounds values, like LA. Uh, common sense <laughs> and education at all. No, but LA at least has a decent like community of intelligence. It has some you culture. Know, Florida, yeah, Florida did not have that at the time and it barely has it now. Mm. So that experience in and of itself was, was also jarring. So here I am, a 14-year-old kid. I have two therapists uh, I have a shrink and a therapist because the therapist can't give me pills, but the shrink can give me pills. So like I got a shrink and a therapist. Uh, I'm starting a new school. I'm a dork. I don't know anything about my body. All I feel is sexual connection with mm-hmm. people and it's really unsettling, but there's nothing I can do about you it. Feel sexual, dork. You feel sexual yeah, connection like with I everyone or not? Feel, well, I was feeling all of that energy. Like I, I felt this like strong draw to that sort of thread of creation inside of people um, is the best way that I can put it. And at the time I saw it as sexual energy. Mm -hmm. Um, Now I know it like encompasses many things. Who were you attracted to at that time? uh, Everyone. Everyone. So if I was, yeah, yeah. So if I was like, so there was like an attraction of wanting to be, and then there was attraction of wanting to be, and then wanting to be with. So yeah. it was, it was, I was like very, very much just like, well, I'm never going to get any of it because I want too much. Yeah. <laughs> I actually think that's quite normal for 14 year olds of sexual energy in general. It's just, oh my God, I'm so greedy. Um, so I'm curious though, with, with, a, a shrink kind of therapist. Did you not think of sharing this? Because of the era that I grew up yeah. in, which is that very mm, strange time of the internet, uh, the early days of AOL and uh, the internet and uh, Jenny Jones and Ricky Lake and Maury Povich and the sensationalism of being of like cross-dressers and mm. drag queens and trans people and like 
we're going to fool you and all mm-hmm. of those things. It's like, well, is any of this real? Mm-hmm. Is this all just, mm-hmm. uh, is this all just something that I've created? Is yeah. it something that, uh, is it a fantasy in this? Yeah. yeah. Is it a curiosity? Yeah. Is it a fantasy? Is it, is it something that's absolutely real? Yeah. Why is it, if it, if it is for all of these people, why is it like, why do I feel so weird about it right now? Yeah. So it's like, those were all the things that I was experiencing and I wasn't, I was never a, a bearded gay hippie in a dress. That was never the like archetype that I was drawn to, you know? So I knew that it wasn't like, all right, I'm not like, that's not what I'm, I'm looking towards and wanting to be. What was the kind of ultimate image if there was an ultimate image? Uh, I guess uh, Catwoman is mm. the ultimate, was the ultimate, like, I was like, oh, that's, that's the expression of, of femininity, uh, like primal instinct and power that I am wanting to be in the world. Yeah. Um, and so that was the young, like the young version of me is like, okay, that as a teenager was, was what I was drawn to. Yeah. I think that seems like um, a worthy um, goal. <laughs> right. I yeah. So I mean, too. I like that. I like that now. <laughs> I, I could go for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> So as a, uh, so now I'm like in my mid teens and I've started doing a lot of psychedelics. And, oh, really? Uh, as a teenager? Asked, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, after I had told my, my mom, I was, my mom, and my brother, I was depressed mm-hmm. that next Halloween, the next year. Uh, so that was the spring. And then, so the fall, uh, which was the year I was in eighth grade, uh, someone dosed me on LSD. Um, Without you knowing? Kid that I, no, no, no. I, oh, I, I knew. I, I yeah. knew that like, he, he floated on through and he was like, yo, what's massive? Stick out your tongues. Uh, and, oh, shit. And, and yeah. we, I had gone through dare. So I was like, wait, that's the stuff that makes you think you can outrun a train. That's not, <laughs> I want to try that. And so, <laughs> so me and my friend Heather, we, we got, he, he dosed us and he flittered off and the two of us had a great entertaining night. And, that was so. That was the first time, and then when we moved to Miami, uh, th- that was the crowd that I went to hang out with because I was such I was so lost. I was like, "Oh, who's gonna let? Who's gonna want to hang out with me? The stoners and the weird kids." So yeah. I hung out with all the the well, art I, kids who smoke cigarettes, and that makes sense. So yeah, so did it teach you anything then, as a as a teenager? It did. Uh, it taught me that uh, reality is yours to make, mm. so mine to make. Um, it taught me that, that there is so much more to the universe than anyone is telling us, but that's only because they don't know it's not their fault, which then allowed me to have a less cynical chip on my shoulder as a teenager. Cause there's like the, the knowledge that like, I understand it all. And like, yeah. you're the snobbiness of what you think you understand in the world versus what you actually understand. And I think LSD for me taught me that, uh, there's so much to figure out. And no one else has it figured out either. So stop being such a cynical jerk about it. Like teenagers yeah. are. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so I think that's, that's what it helped me with as well as giving me a common ground with the people that I was with. Yes. Uh, it's been huge. Yeah. Every one of us was doing LSD in the school. Like there was not, uh, they came and did one of those anti-drug speeches and they were like, I hear you all have a drug problem at the school. And this kid in the back stands up and goes, uh, no, you can get whatever you want here. What do you need? Oh, that's uh, hilarious. Tackled and dragged <laughs> out, but hilarious. <laughs> like that was the experience. So fast forward a little bit, you know, it's a funny thing about sex <laughs> and sex energy um, and what happens to people when they engage in that connection with others the things that get stirred up and that people become. And every time I had sex, this would come back up. So, uh, so college was uh, more of the same. I did not like suddenly feel more comfortable in my skin and know what to do and like feel all stable and steady. No, I, I was still like very confused, still looking for male role models to be able to pattern these things that I had no instinct for after fascinatingly so. Meaning um, you were looking for re- re- male role models in terms of your sexual identity and how to be with people sexually or? No, because I think 
my energetic instinct came out there no matter what I did. Right. So, but like in a normal, normal world, uh, I see. looking normal to world. The, yeah. Yeah. The, the guys and men around me as a, as a way to pattern my behaviors yeah. and my personality, because I didn't have one. Yeah. I didn't have an yeah. instinct. Yeah. Yeah. My instinct was like, I need to figure this part of myself out. Yeah. It wasn't like, this is me. Yeah. You know, so you was. felt more, I know I, I get that. Did you feel then more free in sex than you did in, I mean, hopefully we all do, but it's not always the case, is it? Because sometimes sex can make you feel very restricted. Uh, so uh, sex, film sets and dance floors. Those sex. were the three places. Yeah. Not filmed sex or film sex? Sets. Film? Uh, so sex, yeah. one word. Got it. Got it. Like it. Like it. Keep it. Want it. I've had it for a while. Film, uh, <laughs> film sets. So like working on sets. Oh, okay. Working on sets. Yeah. And dance floors. Oh, this, this is, this, this is I, like, I like all these things. I like all these things. I where, think this is my mantra. Sex, film sets. <laughs> dance floors. I like it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay. okay, now we're getting <laughs> so those were the three places I was most in my body and my being mm. and like whatever was going on film set because that was art and creation and I can tap mm. into that creation energy and everyone else is also in that energy. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. so it placated that confusion for a while. It's every, and it gave me something yeah. to do. It's it's um, transformation in each each one of those, right? So yeah. Transformation. And film is transformation. Dance is transformation. Through relationship, yeah. through the the shooting, through the the, the crazy shit you go through, like yeah. all of that is yeah. You, uh, it, that's a whole other topic. Yes. So uh, those were the three places I felt in my being. So yeah. I I drove myself to keep those three things. Sex I wasn't having much of. But I was always on set and I was always on a dance floor. Yeah. So at least I had two out of the three and I was relatively able to quell this part of me so that I can kind of get on with building an experience of life. Yeah. Uh, But when you do that and you still don't have a core instinct for who you are, uh, eventually that comes back to haunt you. Yeah. So I get out of college. I remember my promise to myself. I find... Uh, I find a gender therapist. I start collecting some some outfits and building little pieces of a personality. And I'm discovering that, huh? Wow, I have an instinct for this. This is uh, this is a big contrast from who I was before. So like, tell me about. I know what. Hey, hang on. And yeah, no, I just want to know, know about like those. I know early what I moments. want. <laughs> I have a picture of myself in my mind. Okay. I know who I want to be. I know the energy I want to create. I mean, this is all just have. sounding so like, like you couldn't do it at all. And then suddenly you could totally do it. But like, what but was no, the turning no, point? That, what were the little moments? It. Like, Th- That's not it though. Yeah. So, so it was a literal, uh, literal waking up in the middle of the night. Mm. Uh, Miley, you promised yourself. You promised uh-huh. yourself. Are you going to be that kind of person uh-huh. Uh-huh. that breaks your promises uh-huh. to your fucking self oh yeah your mom always told you no matter what you could say whatever shit you want to other people but you got to be honest with yourself yes and um so i wake up in the middle of the night and i'm like well i gotta deal with this so i went and found a therapist that was known for uh gender work and uh went and talked to her she referenced me to an endocrinologist and i was moving forward i was gonna i was gonna do it i was moving towards transition. And I was all for it. I was 25. And I was like, good, doing it before I'm 30. I'm not going to be one of those old people that's doing this. This is going to be great. But I didn't realize that this fake psyche that I had built up, this fake male personality was going to hold on for dear life. I didn't realize that this fake being almost like a hide of sorts was going to stick what did you say? around a what? A what? A like a Mr. Hyde of sorts. Oh, like Jacqueline, you know? Mr. Hyde? Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I had yeah. created this other being that yeah, wasn't actually me yeah. compared to how I was interacting through the fear of going through this transition at this point. I didn't have fear around taking hormones at all. Like I went to the endocrinologist, I put the $100 down. I like didn't even think twice about it. 
And like, I was ready. At some point, I, someone who had known me while I was in college came back into my life and we fell in love. And for whoever's listening, if you're on a path to self-discovery and someone comes into your life that you're like, holy shit, it's blown my mind, this love, I can't believe it, run. Oh my God, I just realized that that happened to me. That just happened. (laughs) It's there to distract you. It is there to distract you. Your your former being is, your soon-to-be former being is manifesting a reason to stay in existence. And this happens all the time around trauma. That's so interesting. Can I just quickly share a personal story? Oh yeah, Because it it was really interesting listening to that. It made me think of when I met my future ex-husband, I was in New York and I was making films and I had made a short film and I, it was well received and I enjoyed it and I was super excited and I was moving on. And then I made another film and it was not the same experience as the first one. And I was struggling with it. You know, I was Mm -hmm. like, Ooh, I was having one of those, you know, shadowy self-confrontation moments of like, maybe I'm not good at this. Maybe I don't know how to do it. And then in walks, you know, Mr. Mr. Right big swinging dick, you know, filmmaker, Mm -hmm. someone who's already successful, already totally on their path. And I was Mm -hmm. gone, you know, I'm like, ah, just put this thing in the trash and move on. And I I feel like it was very similar because I was doing something that was very close to my heart and I was getting very Mm -hmm. confronted. And it was way uh-huh. easier to and, look at the big guy. You got a reason. <laughs> I got yeah, it. you got a reason. Yeah. Gone. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Five years, just gone. Just, wow. just going to go do that for a while until ready to try this again because it's actually what the heart wants. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And maybe, you know, to have compassion for that, maybe it's not, maybe you're not ready until you're ready. You know what I mean? I mean, and, and that is actually, it, there's, there's that two sides of the story. I say, don't fall for it because even if you're not ready, it'll still take you just as long, but yeah. you'll, you won't have the stupid pain in the middle. Yes. <laughs> stupid old so, pain. Yes. <laughs> where, you know, it's the kind of pain where you're like, man, I'm glad I went through that because it taught me a lot, but man, that was stupid. That was like, stupid and it dumb. chewed up time, right? It chews up yeah, time like nothing so, else. Ugh. So okay, so you uh, fell in love, of, and then you and you sort of retreated on your journey. You you did sort of retreated, yeah. retreated a little bit. Gave myself a few more years, but I fell in love. Moved back to Chicago. Was doing production work. She didn't like it because of the hours. She thought I was cheating on her. We're in our twenties. Everybody is messed up in the head. It's all emotional. Like these, we're not. Uh, she was queer. Also, recently, like she thought. Uh, the mistake that I made in that relationship when it started, I didn't tell her I was dealing with being trans. So she fell in love with somebody and then I told her about it. And then she felt like I had falsified it. Yeah, uh, She was a lot more queer than she admitted to herself. And she thought dating me would, would be enough to be straight. And that then when I brought this up, it wow. caused all of those questions for her again, right. which then created a terrible relationship. <laughs> nice, dynamic. nice little hole of mirrors there, huh? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> when you're in your mid twenties and you're already, and you're already going to therapy for a relationship after a year, you probably should have quit. <laughs> but we, Sound but I was committed. I thought no one was going to fall in love with me again. I was, mm. this, is, this is it. This is all I'm going to have. This is my soulmate. And I'm stuck with it. And I got to figure this out. So. Uh, but that was not the case. And when we broke up, it was great. And I felt free. Yeah. And I moved. A couple of years went by. I stayed. I stayed in Chicago working at a post house. I slowly added things to my myself uh, to push my androgyny. Um, I started kind of pushing that more to see if it would be enough. Adding to yourself. Like, uh, like tighter pants and lower cuts. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know... Uh, long hair and little pieces of sort of boosting uh, the feminine. Do you, do you see it like yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. And putting these little pieces of the feminine that was inside of me uh, on the mm-hmm. exterior mm-hmm. and seeing if it would be enough. Enough to satisfy you? Is that what you mean? Yeah. 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 Like, would I have to transition completely? Mm. Where, where am I at? And yeah. So I get a call, I get asked to move back to New York. And I, and I start this whole thing all over again. All right, I'm going to figure it out. But this time I order hormones off the internet. 
Ooh. and I don't have to go to the doctor and I read all about it. And I, there's this now this new thing that has been created around all of it where um, people are able to have access to information and other people that are going through the same thing and different pieces of the experience to be like, oh, I'm not necessarily crazy. Yeah. Oh, this is real. Oh, this is cool. Wait, I have this piece of the puzzle that you don't know about. Like, do you ever think about this? Do you have this experience? And that's still going on. Like the <clears throat> the trans community on Instagram is just all about that. Sharing each other and sharing information and uh, the self. <clears throat> so mm. then there's this kind of repository of people uh, willing to put themselves out there to show that this is a thing and to not be afraid and just be yourself. Mm. So they're, they're, uh, so I order them on the internet and I start uh, self-medicating and I instantly feel better. I'm not depressed. I'm not conflicted. My, I'm making better decisions. My body is, is, is feeling better. And so I meet a dominatrix and she and I build uh, a platonic bond and we are still platonic life partners. Um, we didn't break up <laughs> and, uh, and we lived together for about four and a half years. And in that four and a half years that we lived together, I pushed more of my gender expression and exploration and, and seeing where I was going to end up. Was she a teacher for you? No, we just were in love. I see. She was unconditional love. She and I had built a relationship that was so clean and honest and caring and trusting that we taught each other what unconditional love was. And that's how I know what unconditional love is and how to give it is through the relationship that I had with her. Then you were to her, you were each other's teacher. Yeah. She wasn't a femininity teacher to me. Yeah. In fact, she was, she, while presenting femme, she was pretty masculine in her, in her soul. Mm. Um, so the, maybe the visual that I got, that I would get inspired by sometimes, but she did not carry the energetic that I was attracted to in that way. We kind of carried the same energetic mm. of like awkward tomboys. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but her being very, and a very, very attractive person. Mm. Our prime of experience together was very, very great to me. Mm -hmm. um, we made porn, not together. We directed and produced um, mm. and ran a porn company for, for a year. And what was, the, what was the goal or the focus of the porn? Femdom. So female domination. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy that hired us to do this, uh, he had a uh, short story. Uh, he had uh, short sold stocks in the late eighties and gone to prison for it for a couple years. He put the money in his mom's name uh, before he went in. So his mom still had this $300,000 and he needed to launder it. And he thought that the best way to launder money is to make porn. Amazing. So he put out a Craig's, so he put out a Craigslist <laughs> and he was, and he was looking for a dominatrix <laughs> to guide him on creating female domination porn studio. Like he just wanted somebody to art direct, right? Somebody just to build the set and then he'd go and do whatever he wanted to do. Lana meets this person. He brings over a bucket of chicken to our house. We live next to a KFC and he went through the drive through before he came in. He brings in this bucket of KFC and he's like, y'all want some chicken? <laughs> like, uh no. Oh, so wow. he's eating he's eating this fried chicken and we're trying to convince him that he should just give us all of the money and we'll just take care of it and he'll get the content that he wants. We convince him of this and then we have to make it. So we made Had you made uh, porn before? Uh, Was this a completely new thing? So uh rewind to graduating college. Okay. I have a notebook and I write down 10 things I want to do before I turn 40. One of them is make artsy porn. It was number seven. So I accomplished number seven on my list. Congratulations. So yeah, I, I had wanted to make porn. Uh, yeah, I got that whole list done, which is why I felt also uh, safe and ready to transition as well. It's like I had accomplished this list of things that I wanted to do mm -hmm. before a certain mm -hmm. time in my life. So everything after that was bonus. So right. for whatever reason, my psyche was like, was like, well, it's bonus time. That's when you get to do what you want. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think that's, you that's, be. that's called earning your own respect. You can, you know, respect oh, and yeah. trust yourself. Then it doesn't really, 
it's fine, isn't it? Whatever you do, <laughs> I think. <laughs> anyway, yeah. okay, so you make the artsy porn that you of your dreams. Yeah, so we made the artsy porn. I took it as an opportunity to uh, get into the business of being female in business and and presenting that way. And because I was having a difficult time with a persona that I had created Mm. inside of an industry that is built by reputation. Mm. So I had created this persona that was this reputation that I didn't know how to, I had, it had backfired on me. Like the reason why I felt comfortable is because I had a stable career, but the stable career was based in this persona yeah. And so I didn't know how to shift and integrate into a new person and keep that yeah. career. So that is the number one thing that kept me standing at the edge of the cliff. It's like, well, damn, I've got a career. How do I do that? And even in a like open-minded, forward-thinking, artsy career like film, I still didn't feel like safe with myself to be able to do that in that industry. Yeah. Which, you know, a little bit of a half and half, but it's fine because people in that industry are like, if you're good at your job and you're good at what you do, there's a lot of tolerance either for behavior, for drugs, for who you, who you are, for all of that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's also, it's very different when you are going through a transformation and when you've gone through a transformation. And I think yeah. the kind of transformation that you've been through and that you, you're still going through is a very consuming it I don't even know if that's the right word but it's a very sort of total proposition it's not like something mm-hmm. you do on the side and then you like Mm-mm. step back into the picture no, oh, by yeah. the way I just completely changed my identity you, you know what I mean it, <laughs> it takes time yeah so. you and people but that's the thing is like people do that like that that is it's less of a thing now mm. but that is like when I was looking for role models that is what happened is like people would go away for a year and they'd come back right. as a new identity. And while they were gone, they would send letters to everyone they knew that they were going to come back as this new identity. Oh yeah, I, the, the letter model, right? Where you're like, I'm yeah. I'm your doctor and that break I've been taking has actually been to turn myself into a woman from a man. And you're like, oh, what do you know? Yeah, and I think now it's different. We're seeing more process. People are more in process. It's a, it's a different... And it's way more open. Yeah. And people know the difference between a cross-dresser and a drag queen and a yeah. trans person. And like the the knowledge of the the basic language of the experience is way more known and, and it's hip. It's almost, you know, being trans is like being gay in the 90s. It's like, you know, we're the we're the next big thing. And it's every 30 years, you know, what's after us? Yeah. I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait for what the yeah, next the yeah, next humanist evolution is. Like, where are we gonna go from nothing? Like, where where are we going to go from no gender, you know, from whatever you want? Like, what do we, what do we do? What, what's the next point of evolution? I can't wait. Maybe it won't be about us anymore. How about that? Oh, well, that would be great. Wouldn't that be good? Maybe maybe we're I'd love for the plants to start talking (laughs) and then to be like, you know, it's been fine. (laughs) So that all of the hippies I know that are always mad at me about the environment, they could, could just, the plants just come down and they're like, you know what? It's cool. Check it out. Now that we can talk here, this is how you help us. That's uh, right. That, that's my anyway. plan. But we'll we'll do that one another time. But there are so many conversations you and I can have about sex. And I feel like it's very branchy. But I want to yeah. stay with you and your story because it won't be satisfying mm-hmm. if we can't catch up with where you are now. So over to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in New York. Uh, I get, uh, I actually get a girlfriend. I fall in love with someone. Um, she is confronting me about all of these ways that I am, that I have not pushed forward. Uh, I'm about 32 at this point. So it's a time that it's a good time that people would confront you about Mm. who you're trying to be in the world. And she asked me, well, if you're stuck in this place, have you ever, have you honestly tried the, you know, just trying to be a dude and just trying it. If you can't get through to the other side, maybe you're just, just go back the other way. And I was, she's like, but give it like a real honest try, mm. like get off the hormones, try to like get back to whatever your biological center is and see where you're at. And I was like, I don't know if that's such a good idea, but, <laughs> but I, <laughs> every cell in your body is like, eh, no. uh, but at the same time, the logical like part of me 
the part of me that's like, yes, and, and the part of me that's, that's in the human experiment. Yeah. Is, no, it's, it's like, a very actually, logical she, and is smart she, idea. Is she yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. so, so I quit and then I broke up with, and then obviously I got flooded with all sorts of feelings and testosterone, you know, oh, I'm going to take on my life. This is great. I'm going to move across the country. And, uh, she, uh, we, I broke up with her. I moved across the country to the Bay which is amazing. I detransitioned and I moved to San Francisco. Yeah, that's weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking weird. <laughs> so, so I, <laughs> that's so the spiraliness of the, the siren kicking in there. Like, wait a minute. Mix, it mix, really mix, is. Yeah. Really is. Like, yeah. okay, you quit. We're going to put you in a place where this is the only thing that people talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, kind of quitting, but not really. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, immerse yourself into a pool of gender politics to get over your gender issues. Yeah, Smart mind, yeah. way to go. So so I, I end up in the Bay Area. I didn't realize that Oakland had the largest population of clowns uh, kind of per capita. It, at the time, clown oh, wait, artists and we're talking artists about actual were like clowns. clowns. Yeah, like okay. actual, okay. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> but like modern clowns where they're like into shenanigans and fuckery and like those clowns Ooh. too. So they're like jugglers and whatnot, but they're also like sex freaks. Anyway, so I get stuck with this crew of clowns and I'm like, well, I hate clowns. What am I supposed to do with this? And uh, one of them and I start I'm getting eating, that, that uh, clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am yeah. stuck in the middle with you. <laughs> Here one of them and I start dating. Life. She's got all sorts of issues around gender. So that stirs everything in me back up. And that makes me rebel back because my testosterone mm. kicks up. I have to interrupt with an observation because it's kind of amazing. I mean, you went, you headed straight for straightness and you landed in a pool of sex deviant clowns. So. Sex deviant queer clowns, yeah. Sex deviant queer clowns. So, yeah. yeah. So, I think the, the shadow was psychedelically being shoved right in your face there, don't you? That was really good. Yeah. Like, that is the, and that is, that is kind of the gift of what I've always seen in my life is following the threads, even though I don't know why I'm following it mm-hmm. at the time. It's like being able to be like, well, I'm just driven to do this. So I'm going to go do it because I'm the creator of my reality. <laughs> right, 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 right. Then you get your response from life. Mm-hmm. So we broke up, uh, but we stayed together as our partners. Uh, and then I started dating someone else. Uh, within that relationship, about six months in, we're having an argument and I'm just not saying anything. I'm just listening. And, but I don't have anything to say. I don't know what to say. She looks at me and she goes, what's going on? You're dead in there. It's like I reached the end of your personality. And I like broke Mm. and I looked right at her and I said, we need to break up. I have to go figure some things out because she had named the thing that I knew. Like, yep, I don't know how to do this. I don't have an instinct for it. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know who I'm supposed to be. I don't know who you need me to be right now. Like, I know I have no context for what you're asking for because it's nothing that I have inside of me. And you just called it out and we can't be together anymore because you obviously need not me. (laughs) So we broke up right there. And I, like the next day I was on the internet, like trying to find a gender therapist. Like, okay, that's it. I got to figure this out. And, And I didn't really look back from there. Just a slow kind of build of the self and it's kind of like a it was a little bit like an addict where you know they say an addiction if you quit you revert back to where you were um emotionally when you started the addiction Mm -hmm. and then if you relapse they say that the addiction just starts right back up at the worst place that it was Mm. while transness turns out that it yeah the same thing if you give for me i gave it up and I tried this other way and tried to be with my biological assigned self and it wasn't right. And so in that, when I started up again, it was like exponentially more. It was like, instead of ending at eight, I started at nine and then moved forward from there as opposed to having to restart all over again. On top of that, being ensconced into a psychedelic community of weirdos and clowns and the, some of the smartest people I've ever met, that made me feel comfortable with my energy and my brain 
it helped me feel, begin to feel comfortable with my body and what that could be and harnessing that transformation that I had known since I stared at caterpillars and butterflies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is the essence of what, <clears throat> what I was drawn to and the beauty of what happens when the butterfly flies away and lives the rest of its life. Are you, where are you at in that stage? Are you the butterfly? Are you flying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, just flying. I'm definitely, I'm definitely flying. Yeah. Um, I have a little bit, I might have another cocooning to go through, but it seems like it's just happening. So yeah. like when I, as, a, as the butterfly flies and its colors get deeper and brighter and healthier and it gets bigger and grows, I guess that's where, where I'm at. I think that if you don't mind a reflection, I, I think that you're at the stage where the butterfly realizes it, it's a butterfly. Oh, yeah. I don't mind that reflection. Okay, appreciate it good, good, good. So, you know, I was thinking as I often do, you know, does, is the self, you know, something that is sort of there? Is it a static thing? Is it something that's always in motion? Is it different according to the person? But but thinking of the butterfly image makes sense to me, and certainly in relation to your story, because um, there is, it's not a void. It's not like, as your girlfriend said, it's not like the end of your personality and there's nothing there, but the butterfly has come through an encounter with the mm-hmm. void and the butterfly is a presence and a strong presence, but it's also not a static thing. So it's not a, it's not a self in the way that other selves or other people, Mm -hmm. you know, I think people have different essential qualities. I I like the, I like the way that you say that Um, because the, uh, the, uh, the caterpillar, when it goes into the cocoon becomes the void, it becomes a pile of goo that then reconstitutes back into this new creature that busts out of the shell. That that's yeah, it's like standing at that void of like, well, I guess I got nothing better to do than recreate myself. And what kind of person and what kind of being, what does my heart really want and what kind of world do I want that being to live in? Uh, when you have an experience that shatters your ego and then you can feel the world building back together, my feeling is always, okay, I'm rebuilding the universe. I'm going to build it back a little bit better. I never say anything specific, so I don't know what my butterfly effect is. Mm -hmm. But I know that in those moments where I'm rebuilding everything and I'm intentionally saying that I want it to be a little bit better than it was before, it's going to be because we are the creators of our reality. That's beautiful. Science and magic, you know? Science and magic. The chemistry has allowed me to harness these parts of myself and remove and, and replace and and fix my chemistry. But the reason I'm driven to do it is magic. I don't have any other reason to believe not. Like most people don't have the thought of, I don't feel right in my body. Maybe I'm supposed to be something else. Why? I would suggest that somewhere in most people's psyche, there is a thought that I don't feel quite right. It's much more sublimated in a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And maybe just genuinely not not as pressing or as interesting to people, but I think that the human experience contains that thought. And I think this is what, what we're, we're learning from the trans community is beautiful sort of language of rebuilding, like you say, always making something, something better and leaning into the unknown. And I do feel that that has a broad application for all of us because none of us really know what's in front of us. We're all winging it. <laughs> just Agreed. not all in butterfly yeah. wings, <laughs> so, different no. kinds of wings. But I, that's what I want to see for everyone. We're, if we're all standing at this void, then we all have the opportunity to evolve and turn our goo into something else and keep the, the butterfly doesn't forget it was a caterpillar. Amazingly. I don't know how that's possible, but it doesn't. And if humanity is able to do that, I didn't forget who I was. I didn't forget the person with the sense of humor and this energy and this magical belief system and the person with a high capacity who can work for many, many hours on an artistic creative project as long as everybody's in it with them. Like All of the pieces that made up my being outside of my gender, I had to figure out how to bring them with me. Because I didn't create them in an in my authentic being, they didn't feel they. I felt like I couldn't keep this authentic. Like I couldn't bring these things with me authentically. But that was my my belief system. Mm. 
mm. that told me that I had to become a completely new person. Well, exactly. It told but you you had to make a, make a choice. And it's yeah. that, I think it's Ken Wilber's theory about evolution is it's transcend and include that we transcend by including all of our experience. And then as you were saying, making it a little bit better. So we bring all the parts with us. We don't have to say either, or we don't have to say that was bad. And now I'm in a good place. Mm -hmm. Even though it might feel like that sometimes. (laughs) We can say whatever we want. It's amazing. We can create worlds that we want to see. And it kind of starts with the self. Mm. And I, and I hope that through our talking and through spreading this word around is that people start to, to receive that more is that if we're creating the self that we want to be in the world, that that's going to create the world that we want to be in. Beautifully said. I'm going to wrap up there and I want to say thank you so much. Great. And I hope we have many <laughs> well, more conversations. I hope so, so too. Is- this went by super fast and I've gotten to where, where I am, but there's so many pieces of that puzzle that I just want to talk to you about. Will you write them down and we can go back because we can do more of these. It's easy. Sure. Great. And next time, pimp your cushions a bit better, please. I will. I'll make a much better environment and I'll put on a gown and I'll, yes. I'll get these boobs I grew up. Thank out you very much. Great. All right. We're definitely, okay. All right. You're we're bringing I, me I, into the closet. So I got to bring me into the closet, yeah. which I got it out. So now I got to figure out how to integrate it back in. It's always like another whole, challenge. It's to to <laughs> yeah, it's a whole. I know. All right, my dear. Lots right. of love. Thank, Thank you. you Thanks so much. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Talking with a fellow explorer like Miley, I felt like we could have gone on for hours. I'll have to have her back on the podcast. I know there are many stories in there. I want to hear about the sexually deviant clowns and all the experimentations that I know have gone into making Miley the open and curious and humorous person that she is. Talking with Miley reminds me that along with the burdens of being a human, there is always infinite possibility, even if it's only in terms of where we direct our thinking. Thank you for listening.